Hello, sportsmen. This being the week of Big Buck Night is a time that we should talk a little bit about antler growth in white-tailed deer. There are a lot of misconceptions about the antlers on deer, what significance they have in the deer world, whether a deer grows a point each year, exactly what factors influence the size of antlers that a buck might grow. We'll cover a lot of these subjects in the next half hour, so stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost, and you're watching The Practical Sportsman. White-tailed deer, the number one big game animal in North America. It produces more wild meat for the table than any other species of game because it's a large animal and it's extremely plentiful. But white-tails are not easy animals to hunt. They're nervous creatures. They have highly developed senses and they like to keep a distance between them and anything that looks, or sounds, or smells like a predator. That's why they take a few bites of food and then look around. Big bucks have a typical big buck walk. They bob their head as if it's a great pain to take a step. When he stops, you're gonna see him chew his cud. This is food he horsed down earlier and later spends hours re-chewing when he can watch for predators. The buck is the one that the hunters have traditionally been after for several reasons. First of all, bucks are generally bigger, more meat. Secondly, in the years when deer were in short supply, wildlife managers restricted deer hunting to bucks only because taking the males from the herd did not have any effect on next year's reproduction. An active buck in his prime will mate with a number of does in the fall, 10, maybe 20, or even more. That means that most of the smaller bucks simply aren't needed. The big ones take care of next year's fawn crop. Naturally, with hunters harvesting more bucks than does during a year, there are less bucks than does in the woods. But there are far more bucks and far more deer than hunters ever see. And these deer aren't usually hiding back in the boondocks either. Most of them hide right under our noses. These deer are standing because they're in the five-acre range pens at the Houghton Lake Deer Research Station, a great place for us to study deer with our cameras. White tails take enormous strides when they run, often 20 feet apart. How high can they leap? Eight or nine feet with ease. In this grass, I suspect they're leaping so they can see better. Does and fawns have been seen jumping between strands of barbed wire that were a foot apart at a dead run without touching either wire. And how fast do whitetails run? Usually 20 to 25 miles an hour, but they can reach speeds up to 40 miles an hour. The size of deer is often a fooler. At a distance, they look larger than they really are. Now this one here weighs 223 pounds as he stands. Not an unusual weight for a southern Michigan buck, four and a half years old. One and a half year olds average between 120 and 150 pounds on the hoof. That yields about 30 to 35 pounds of boneless, trimmed, pure meat. This buck here is a little bony. Not the best buck to take if you're a meat hunter. Set your sights on a heavier deer, one with a little fat over the ribs. It's an old saying, though, that you, know, you can't eat the antlers. But antlers are still an attraction to hunters. The bigger, the better, a lot of people feel. Now, this buck, for some reason, hasn't rubbed the velvet off his antlers yet. It's peeling off, but evidently, he hasn't been rubbing enough. He's also a shy buck, staying away from the rest of the herd as much as possible. Maybe the velvet is still sensitive for some reason, but this buck is a little behind in his antler development. Speaking of comparative development, in these pens at Houghton Lake are year-and-a-half-old bucks that the DNR is using to study antler development. Now, despite the fact that they eat the same food and are exactly the same age, this buck has long, single spikes, while his pen mate has a nice-looking six-point rack. There's no truth to the tale that points on a buck's antlers can be used to count its age. 
All these deer are a year and a half old. Many have four corns, little four-point racks. And one fast developer even has an eight-point rack. Now that's in his first year of antler growth. Food can influence antler size, but primarily it's genetics. The offspring of deer with big racks tend to grow big racks too. And as you might guess, big racked bucks get more respect from the rest of the deer. Watch the smaller deer scoot when this big buck moves. When he puts his headgear down and walks through a crowd, they open up a path. That's the law of the jungle with big bucks. This buck probably bumped or injured the short side of his rack some way when they were in the velvet. That's usually what causes abnormal antlers. Now, genetics is a major factor in antler size along with nutrition, but just how much a high-protein diet affects antlers in one season isn't really known. The DNR is studying that question with this group of deer right here. Antlers are the fastest growing bone in the animal world. And they are actually bones, but they're not like the bones inside an animal's body because they're solid. Antlers have no hollow center with marrow. In the wild, bucks this size and this age probably wouldn't see much breeding this year. Well, actually, now they would see it, but they wouldn't be doing it themselves. The three and four year olds have most of the action, but there's a chance that this youngster with his highly developed rack would do his share of breeding too. Mother Nature puts the biggest racks on the healthiest, strongest bucks. They're the ones that win the battles for the does and their genes are passed on to future generations of deer. White-tailed deer are fascinating to study. They're the most wary of our big game animals and this season there will be plenty taken by hunters and many more for hunters to watch during their days in the deer blinds. People love to watch deer. They like to see them bound in the wild, and they also love to see the antlers on a deer, whether they're in the wild or whether they're, they're in our museum here at the Practical Sportsman Museum. The antler displays in the deer uh, draw a big crowd. This one in particular, this is Jose, a deer that was a pet of the uh, Pittman family down in Brooklyn for, oh, almost 16 years. Jose, during his lifetime as a, as a household pet, grew 15 sets of racks, and Doris Pittman has uh, loaned us all of these racks to put on display here at the museum. This rack that Jose is wearing right here was his six-and-a-half-year-old rack. Taxidermist Ray Dawson says that was his best rack that he grew in all of his years. As he got older and older, the racks got a little more gnarled. We do have a photo here of Lou Pittman, who unfortunately passed away last year. Uh, but Doris has sent this picture to be on display with Jose. It's something you can see at the museum and see the evolution of the antlers on white-tailed deer.